Ubuntu installation video. This video shows a Linux Ubuntu installation with updates and additional drivers. For Ubuntu on a used computer or dual boot, multiple operating systems, see another video. This video assumes a new computer with an unpartitioned hard disk drive. This is not the case if the manufacturer has pre-installed software on the computer. If so, treat the computer as used. Required is an installation medium like ACD or USB stick with an Ubuntu installation image. If you have not yet created one, see the Ubuntu installation medium video. Most computers will automatically boot from a USB stick or CD. Make sure it is inserted when the computer boots. If the computer does not boot from the correct medium, verify the BIOS boot device settings. These differ by mainboard and are documented in the mainboard manual. If the computer boots from the correct medium, the purple screen will be displayed. It is possible to see the underlying streaming code by pressing the windows and the down directional arrow key simultaneously. The same key combination can be used to return to the purple screen. If the installation halts or fails during this phase, that information can be useful. On the left side of the welcome screen, a system language can be chosen. It is possible to try Ubuntu before installing. Keep in mind that Ubuntu is running from a CD or USB stick. After installing to a drive, the system will run smoother. Before the installation can begin, the available disk space will be checked to verify if sufficient space is available. To be able to download updates during the installation, an internet connection is required. The horizontal arrows in the top right corner indicate that the connection is working. If this is not the case, a connection can be set by clicking the icon and Edit Connections. Network settings will be covered in another video. The package with third-party software is a MP3 plugin including a decoder for MPEG layers. No other operating systems have been detected and two types of installations are available. The first will erase a disk and partition it for Ubuntu. With multiple disks, the first one will be used. It is possible to select another disk, then click Install Now. The second option offers the possibility to partition the disk or disks yourself. In this video, the computer has two identical disks. First, I create the partition table, then the partitions themselves. I allocate 2 GB for the swap partition. This is comparable to the Windows page file. If the random access memory becomes full, the system can fall back to the swap partition. The ancient advice is to create a swap partition twice the size of the memory. To use the sleep mode, three times the size. For more than 2 GB of memory, this no longer applies. In that case, see the table in the description of this video for the ratio. I have been ignoring this advice for a while now. My own computer has 8 GB of memory with 1 GB swap, which is only used in rare occasions. Depending on the amount of memory and the usage of the system, the swap partition will be used. By creating it on another disk than the system, or even better, dividing it over multiple drives, the swapping speed can be increased. If in doubt, do not ponder. It is possible to see the usage of the swap partition and edit partition sizes after the installation. The remaining space I allocate to a standard Linux file system. I set the mount point to root with the slash, then Ubuntu will be installed completely on this partition. Since I don't have any plans for my second drive, I install the main boot record on the first. Perhaps I will decide to use that drive in another computer later. Set a location during the installation. This is for the time zone settings. Ubuntu will synchronize with the time server. The keyboard. Pick your keyboard type. Most computers where I live, in the Netherlands, have a United States international keyboard with dead keys. User details. The username cannot contain capital letters. There is an option to encrypt the home directory. Without the password it will be unavailable. This is not possible when the automated login is set. To prevent the installation from booting again, the installation medium needs to be removed. Then press Enter to reboot the computer. 
This is the Ubuntu desktop, with the system icons on the top right corner and a Unity launcher on the left. I undock a few shortcuts so I will have more room for active applications. These can still be found by clicking the Ubuntu icon. The menu can also be opened with the Windows key on the keyboard. Now the final updates. To see changes and descriptions, click the triangle. Use the same password as during the installation. Again, it is possible to see the streaming code by clicking the triangle. The hardware icon indicates that drivers are available, but first, I reboot the computer. Now the hardware icon is not visible, the additional drivers are found through the system settings. Sometimes multiple drivers are available for one device. Read the description for the difference. When closing the window, it seems as if the driver is deactivated. But the red system icon in the top right corner indicates that it is necessary to reboot the computer to complete the changes. On this virtual system with one 3.9 GHz core with 2 GB random access memory and 32 MB video memory, the installation took 50 minutes. The Ubuntu version is 12.04.1 LTS. LTS stands for Long Term Support. I will save the current state of this virtual system for the upgrade video.